You may or may not have been hearing about a little thing called Swarm of the Raven. In this video, we're going to take a look at the weapon and why you should get this thing right now. I'll also go over what perks you should try and get for the PvE God Roll, since today is all about a ton of damage and, well, grenade launchers are really good at that as of late. I had this video mostly done before reset yesterday and I wanted to get it out a few hours after, but turns out I got rid of all my previous grenade launchers, including what was probably a God Roll Swarm, and then I had to go grind some PvP to get it, so unfortunately I'm a little later than I'd like, but here it is. So the first Iron Banner of Season of Opulence has arrived, and it offers one of the strongest heavy weapons in the game. This time, the event works a little differently though. Instead of completing bounties to have the ability to buy weapons and armor, you can now obtain all of the Season 7 armor through the Iron Banner questline. Now if you don't pick up the quest, this means turning in tokens to get Saladin's Vendor Engram will only drop weapons, since armor is added to the loot pool after you acquire it from the quest steps. And if you're a PvE player, there's one weapon you'll want in particular. That's Swarm of the Raven. And today we're going to be talking about why this grenade launcher, of all weapons, is secretly the king of the heavy slot. Now this video mainly focuses on the performance of Swarm and other weapons like it in the new raid content, but the info I'm covering here is useful in content anywhere in PvE, like against Nightfall bosses or bosses in the Menagerie. Like I mentioned in my Crown of Sorrow raid guide, grenade launchers are pretty hot right now and it's why I recommended things like Prospector, Mountaintop, and Anarchy. And something I also brought up was aggressive frame grenade launchers. Now if we take a look back at I Am A Dragon AMAA's damage chart madness sheet, you can see the amount of damage per second our heavies can put out in the raid, and it's a lot. One thing that becomes immediately apparent is how insane grenade launchers are right now, specifically aggressive frame grenade launchers. If you can get a good roll, you're looking at a higher DPS than Prospector or even Wendigo with its 6 buff grenades. Outrageous Fortune is a pretty easily obtainable aggressive frame you can grind for, but now with Iron Banner back, Swarm of the Raven is even easier to get, and it actually has an advantage that other grenade launchers don't really have. And that's the fact that Swarm of the Raven, unlike Outrageous Fortune or Prospector or any other things I mentioned, Swarm of the Raven's actually a void weapon. Twitter users Aotera, Lucas, Destiny, and Silent Storm put together this really neat and simple table of some of your best options for damage in the final encounter of the new raid. This stuff could also be applied to Galron's Deception the third encounter. All credit for this goes to those guys, I'll link their accounts and channels in the description. So it turns out most of the things on this list I had already brought up in my raid guide, but the thing that surprised me the most was seeing Swarm at the very top, a grenade launcher I hadn't thought about in forever. Now there's a lot of numbers and buffs here, things like empowering melee and the leviathan armor mods and stuff, and you might be looking at this and notice how the damage of Swarm only really beats everything else out in the last column. And that's because Swarm of the Raven is getting the advantage from one thing in particular, that most of the other weapons don't benefit from. And that thing is Tractor Cannon, which buffs void damage by 50%, while buffing all other elemental damage by 33%. And Tractor Cannon is ridiculously easy to apply and specifically very easy to apply to the Crown of Sorrow bosses. With Tractor Cannon, Swarm of the Raven gets to really shine here. Aotera was generous enough to let me use some of the footage from his fastest Galron kill video, and while they weren't using Swarm of the Raven specifically, they were all using 150 RPM nade launchers with the one guy using Tractor Cannon and were still able to smoke the boss in under 10 seconds. You gotta watch the full video of them one phasing both bosses, it's incredible. Using Swarm of the Raven and Tractor Cannon together will result in incredible damage, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try and stack as many other buffs as possible. Using things like the Opulence and Old Leviathan mods and the Crown of Sorrow mods, combined with things like Empowering Melee, are going to make a serious difference. Like the difference between 2 million and like 5 million. So if you want the ultimate monster killing machine, there's a few specific things you should try and get on Swarm. Luckily this gun is an aggressive frame, meaning it's a 150 RPM grenade launcher, which is the fastest firing of the grenade launchers, which is awesome. The only con being that it has a lot of recoil. But recoil isn't really that big of a factor when you're shooting a boss that's standing still. Instead, velocity is way more important, because the higher velocity and the lower the blast radius, the more damage your grenade is going to do on impact, which is what we want against bosses. 
So when we take a look at the available perks in column 1, they each have their advantages and they have their disadvantages too, but hard launch is the one that gives us the most bang for our buck. Hard launch both increases our projectile speed while decreasing the blast radius, and both of those are ideal, so if you can get hard launch to roll in column 1, you're already on the right track. But more importantly than column 1 is what's in column 2, it's where we have a ton of different options for our grenades. As we go through the list, think back to what I said earlier about impact. You want your grenades to have a lot of impact damage. And while high velocity rounds may be tempting because of its increased projectile speed, spike grenades is actually the perk you want more. Spike grenades increases stability, which is a nice bonus, but the main benefit of spike grenades is the increased damage on direct hits. The reason you want this is because your goal with this grenade launcher is already to hit the target directly, and since you're not relying on blast radius, spike grenades provides a significant damage bonus over the other perks. It's going to seriously up your impact damage, which is exactly what you want. The third and fourth columns aren't as important, and from here you can kind of go with whatever, but looking at the available perks, I would definitely try and go for a field prep roll in column three for the increased ammo reserves. The more ammo you can carry, the more damage you can do. It's simple as that. And in the fourth column, we don't really have anything that's going to help us out in boss DPS, so quick draw is the one thing I would want for my role, but Genesis or Rampage is fine as well. If you manage to get a Velocity Masterwork on top of all of those things, you've got yourself a PvE God Roll Swarm of the Raven. The only way you can make this better is by adding a boss spec mod onto it, which you know, why wouldn't you, right? And with your entire group using this thing, there's going to be a lot of easy one phases in your future. As long as one person has a tractor cannon to give that 50% buff to everyone else, you're set. Is it the highest DPS power weapon in the game though? Maybe not, as technically it's still beaten by Whisper of the Worm and Darcy. That said, you don't really want to bring Darcy or Whisper into something like Crown of Sorrow. It's not really great for killing knights or wizards or ogres quickly, and it's not even really ideal for the boss. And while grenade launchers like Swarm might not be number one, in terms of highest DPS they're still more versatile than Whisper or Darcy in most of the current relevant content. They're a lot better for quickly eliminating majors and groups of enemies, and they require less precision, making them easier and just overall more enjoyable to use, and to me that makes grenade launchers the best heavy weapons in the game right now. The mountaintop and anarchy combo is equally good, and the next best thing besides Swarm of the Raven, and it's a combo that doesn't require tractor cannon, although you could use it if you wanted, but both mountaintop and anarchy are not necessarily easy to get, and also they severely limit your loadout in the raid. Not everyone is comfortable running two grenade launchers in difficult endgame content. I know I'm not. This makes Swarm of the Raven, or even any aggressive frame grenade launcher with spike nades, an even better choice for most players. With the recent buff to grenade launchers, they are some of the best weapons right now, which is why you shouldn't sleep on Swarm of the Raven. In fact, don't sleep on this Iron Banner at all, because you can now get enhanced perks on all of the armor, and since it's year one armor, you can finally use all of your old year one ornaments with random rolls. As someone who's refused to part with some of their year one Iron Banner Hunter armor, you can imagine how psyched I am for this event. I got a pretty good roll on my Swarm of the Raven, but I can tell you I'm going right back into Iron Banner after this video to try and get an even better God roll. Anyway guys, that's all the stuff I wanted to cover in this video. Good luck in Iron Banner today, and hopefully some of you are able to snag some God rolls. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.